uh, in the meantime that jean is uh, uh, setting up his computer, let me introduce the brief introduction. So it's my great pleasure to introduce the first speaker of the symposium. So my close collaborator and friend, Jean-Pierre Chagreux. Jean-Pierre is a professor emeritus at Institut Pasteur and the Collège de France, and permanent member of the National Academy of Sciences in the US. Uh, Jean-Pierre is one of the founding fathers of the concept of allosteric and his pioneering work that we all know, so that is known as the uh, Bono, Wiemann, and Schenger model, laid the foundation to the discovery of allosteric drugs, which is actually the theme of the symposium. So his research the interest to span from allosteric regulation of synaptic receptor and drug design for brain disorders to the neuronal architecture of consciousness. So Jean-Pierre has been a great source of inspiration for many of us, but in particular for myself and my lab. So I'm grateful that we made it to Spark Group on person. And I'm really happy that you're here. I'm very touched. So without further delay, I leave you the ground and look forward to your kind of lecture. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Marco, for uh, <coughs> this invitation. Thank you also to the uh, member of the organizing committee, and most of all to Zoe Fournia, who uh, initiated this very important initiative, which is ALODD. So I am glad to give you uh, some kind of introduction to Allosterian receptor, and uh, I uh, entitled it uh, toward a new Allosteric pharmacological receptor. History, development, and update of the concept. Now, this uh, uh, lecture will uh, be split into uh, four main uh, uh, parts. First, on theory, uh, which uh, uh, actually developed uh, around 61, 67. Uh, it was uh, still existing at that time. Uh, and uh, then uh, the nicotinic acid pinprin receptor as a bona fide allosteric protein at the amino acid level in the seven days until the 2000. Then the allosteric transition of pentamenic receptors at the atomic level, which started uh, around 2005. And uh, then uh, allosteric modulation and the consequence for drug design. Uh, what uh, we may call uh, conformation-specific pharmacology. Uh, and of course, uh, I take the opportunity again to mention the name of uh, uh, Zoe Cournia. Uh, so this uh, theory was uh, elaborated in uh, 1961 from uh, uh, some uh, conceptual basis uh, which was at the time uh, drug design, uh, which was conceived by uh, two Nobel Prize winners, Daniel Bobet and, and uh, James Black, uh, as uh, some kind of competition between uh, the drug and some inter internal endogenous uh, chemical signals. And um, Daniel Bobet, uh, among his many discoveries, uh, develop the structure of uh, lactidine, which is an analog of the tubocurabine acting on the nicotinic receptor uh, sensitive to acetylcholine, and uh, uh, Sir James Black, uh, propranol, uh, as uh, some kind of structural analog of uh, noradrenaline. So these are only two examples uh, of. Uh, uh, on what kind of conceptual basis uh, the drug design uh, was developing. Uh, since that time, uh, where uh, the main idea was one site, one conformation, then uh, there was the discovery of allosteric interaction and the identification of receptor for it. So what about the concept of allosteric interaction compared to competitive interaction I just mentioned. 
Well, uh, it is born from uh, the study of regulatory protein in bacteria, like uh, serine amidase, uh, which is uh, an enzyme um, at the beginning of the pathway for the biosynthesis of isoleucine. And Umberger in uh, 56 discovered that the end product of the pathway was selectively inhibiting the first enzyme, not the other one. So this uh, uh, was an uh, 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 important finding. And uh, when I started the, my thesis and, uh, under the direction of Jacques Monod, uh, I wanted to have uh, a subject of my own at the time, uh, things uh, which were of interest with the regulation of uh, protein biosynthesis and the operon. And uh, uh, therefore, I wanted to work on this kind of more, more elementary interaction. And uh, the view uh, I had was that, in fact, there was a specific design for the feedback inhibition, which did not exist with the other enzyme. So I tried to dissociate uh, the feedback inhibition from the catalytic activity of uh, the enzyme. I uh, obtained that by equilibration at high temperature, as you can see here. And similar effects were also found uh, by Gerhardt and Berlin at the same time uh, with another enzyme uh, from bacteria started sans carbaminase. So, uh, and using a different way, they will creation. So, uh, these uh, very early data, 61 again, uh, show that uh, there was some specific uh, device uh, involved in the feedback inhibition, in the regulation of enzyme activity. And then the, the concept I propose at the end of this uh, presentation where Jacques Monod did not co-sign. I don't know why it was the, he let me take my risk. If I <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I propose uh, uh, two different models, the classical uh, model by competitive interaction with fear uh, due to the difference of structure overlapping and another model, no overlapping. So this uh, second, uh, model was uh, further discussed uh, by Jack Monod in the concluding remarks of the meeting with Dr. Moore, and he developed the word allostate. It's clear that uh, it is uh, much more attractive that uh, no overlapping would uh, have no success at all if it has been used uh, as a word to qualify uh, this kind of interaction. So the way of the word Allosteric is born, and uh, uh, this indirect interaction between topographically distinct sites, which is mediated by a conformation change. So, uh, throughout uh, the CD's work, uh, I further studied some observations which were made by Umberger that uh, there are cooperative effects, which uh, can be found between uh, substrate and also between uh, uh, effector molecule, which means that uh, there are several sites which uh, interact with each other. And the interesting thing uh, uh, which uh, I and others observed is that one can shift the shape of the curve from uh, an S shaped curve to some kind of hyperbola. And that uh, when there is this uncoupling, as I just mentioned before, not only you uncouple the interaction between the feedback inhibitor and the active site, but also the cooperative interaction between active site and, and, uh, uh, and regulatory site. So at that time, also the structure of uh, hemoglobin was known from the work of Perus, and uh, the symmetry of the uh, uh, hemoglobin molecule uh, proposed. On this basis, uh, regrouping uh, the different information, and this was uh, the conclusion of my thesis work. Uh, and of course, the, uh, Jacques Monod 
became interested and contributed to it. Uh, the proposal was made on uh, that the fatalistic protein uh, are oligomers. And that is an interesting proposal. Maybe there are some which are not oligomers. Uh, this was emphasized by Martin Carpus, but uh, our view is that uh, they are oligomers, they possess symmetry properties. And uh, the other uh, uh, postulate we made is that uh, the ligands do not induce uh, the conformation change, but the conformation change pre exists, and uh, that uh, the regrouping of these different kinds of interactions is made by the fact that the transition takes place between two states which possess symmetry properties, uh, which allows both the heterotropic and homotropic interaction to take place. So this is uh, uh, the basis of the Monoweyman uh, changer model. And um, uh, the uh, uh, main idea is uh, uh, the ligand shift uh, a pre-existing equilibrium instead of inducing uh, a conformation change. Now, this uh, uh, model was, of course, uh, uh, formalized. And I think one of the main uh, uh, con conclusions of this formalization uh, is that, first of all, we can uh, specify the uh, equilibrium constant as L, and then also demonstrate through this uh, equation that the state function, the conformation thing, as a function of Lyon, uh, differ from the binding function. There is no direct relationship between the two as in industry. So this uh, uh, was uh, an aspect that I tried to uh, demonstrate uh, in the laboratory of Gerhard uh, and Chapman. And here is uh, the attempt with uh, aspartate transcarbonylase to show that indeed the conformation um, uh, uh, states uh, uh, as a function of lying and concentration, do not follow uh, the binding function. So uh, there is a, clearly a difference between state or conformation of state function and binding function, which is one of the uh, direct prediction of uh, the two state models. 